Hey, welcome to the show. So we are on the couch with world artists from The Crucible this week. How you doing, guys? Great. What's up? Hello. Awesome. So we are going to be walking around some of the maps that you know and love, where you fought your friends and people that you'll never meet in your life. Uh, this is where guardians do battle against the most dreaded enemy in Destiny, each other. Mm. And these are the guys that build those spaces. They're uh, a part of that team. There are more than just y'all that build Crucible maps. But, yeah, a bunch of us. But we got you on the couch, we got you in the hot seats, mm -hmm. and you're gonna talk to us about your creative process. Very awesome. So let's introduce you to these guys, and I'll shut up and uh, throw it over to Adam Williams. Hi, how, how are hey, you doing? Great, I'm, great to be here. I'm just so happy that you're here. <laughs> let's throw it over to your <laughs> boss, Mick Buckmiller. Big boss man. So I uh, lead and manage the PvP team. Yeah. I started about seven years ago. Yeah. I've done Reach with Dan Miller. And I get a lot of coffee, do wine on ones. <laughs> there you go. And uh, sometimes make maps. Sometimes. Stuff. Sometimes you make maps. And uh, we're going to take a look at three of those maps today. One of them will be uh, led on a guided tour by Cooley Callahan. That's me. Actual name, probably the coolest name at Bungie. Uh, we got a lot of cool names. Cooley Callahan? Yeah. I like smelly, smallest man. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to go into the Wayback Machine and we're gonna take a look at some of the earliest origins of uh, Crucible architecture. So, uh, Mick, talk to us about what we're seeing here. Well, we were trying to figure out what Destiny was gonna look like, and one of the palettes we wanted to make was the Vex palette, and so we started making like different shapes that would create cool uh, experiences for the new movement modes. But then eventually decided that having the art in there made it difficult to actually make design decisions. So we went back to the gray box, and from there we turn it into more of like a, a human architectural experience. Yeah, yeah so but, rather but, than the Vex yeah. palette, we're uh, taking a look at uh, what looks like a factory in old Russia. Mm -hmm. In fact, that was the code name for this map in development. Yeah, we don't factory. always ship with things like rusted lands. You know, um, the fiction team helps us apply lore from the world to shape the Crucible experience. But factory was one of the first things I ever really saw from Destiny. That was where I first got my first kill in Destiny. It's so our first prototype map. I mean, greatest of all time. I don't want to like, you know, go too far, but uh, it's too far. It's definitely my favorite map. Um, it has like all of the engagement distances in one map, right? Short range, close range. So it's a great you can still snipe. test environment. This is your proving grounds. This is where you go when we're debating, you know, the feedback that we get off the internet or, you know, player data or our own personal experiences. This is where we go and see if we need to buff auto rifles or nerf shotguns. This, this pretty much had the most like time spent on any map ever because it was like a five year development cycle. Yeah. One of the really interesting things about the map development process that, uh, that the public doesn't usually see uh, is how many times a layout can change over time. Mm -hmm. uh, not just For your sure. design iterations, but even themes changing. Like you saw Mick originally right. uh, built this map to be uh, made out of Vex architecture and, mm -hmm. and sand. And over the course of development, themes change. And now it's you know sitting here with the like, human architectural palettes. In the yeah, and, old Cosmodrome. Yeah, and part of it is that we have different development cycles. Uh, we start with like incubation, which is where we come up with the idea, like what mm -hmm. the flow is going to be, what the layout is going to feel like, and then also potentially what the theme is going to be. And then once we start getting the actual gray box, uh, which is essentially what we call mass out, mm -hmm. um, that's like our first playable where we, where we feel like the, the scale and the, the padding Thanks. and the, uh, the general layout works pretty well. And then after that, we go into architecting where we add some we kind of focus more on fine-tuning the gameplay and adding the visuals to it. And then that, all these things, all these different stages change the way the map plays and looks and feels. So yeah. we have to constantly be iterating on the design. Well, and you guys are building arenas for a sport that has yet to be finalized. Yeah, that's yeah. true. So, right. I mean, developing the play space when the play itself is not locked in concrete probably yeah. requires you to make a yeah. lot of changes throughout yeah. development because yeah. oh look today there's a new build and we can all jump twice as high or yeah. oh look at this somebody decided maybe destiny is a game where you can't jump like there were yeah. moments like yeah, that like right the slide yeah. that's a that well, was kind yeah, of the new yeah, yeah, the slide into, yeah and everybody starts welding each other there was <laughs> yeah, yeah. there's been points slide in development shotgun. where we didn't even have secondary weapons able to be equipped yeah. uh, either right. because they weren't made yet or a bug or something and you had to basically build your map during those periods around yeah. oh, uh, a lot primary of weapon engagements. Yeah. Like a lot of these spaces have, give the player some very obvious choices. So when they make a decision, they feel like if they lose a battle or win the battle, it's because they like actually made a good or a bad decision. Yeah, like personally, like it took me a while to figure out, like if someone's capping C, 
Um, I definitely feel like, oh, like I'm going to get up in there and I'm going to, uh, I guess I'm a hunter. There. I'm usually, <laughs> oh, <laughs> embarrassing. I'm usually a titan. Um, yeah, so like you just run up there and you get up in their face, but actually I found the best way to approach C if they're capping it is to come around here and just take this nice slow route around and use this, you know, this pillar for cover. It's really hard for them to know exactly what you're going to do because, I mean, Destiny, as much of, as it's a twitch skill and, and movement-based game, it's also, I mean, I think everybody knows, like, playing Iron, Iron Banner with six people, there's a lot of communication going on. There's a lot of map control going on. Uh, let's take a look at uh, the artwork yeah. for uh, Anomaly. So, yeah. uh, Cooley, you're gonna you're lead us on the tour here. Yeah. Obviously, Anomaly. Uh, you know, the themes are sort of excavation and research. Uh -huh. We've got this strange piece of Golden Age tech, kind of reminiscent of what we saw in Rasputin's bunker, and everything revolves around that, right? Yes. Yes. Um, the very original um, uh, sort of like space for Anomaly was created by another environment artist, and um, it was this dome in a cave. And that had this really cool feel to it where it was just sort of unexpected. And so it ended up being this, you know, this, this, this strange, mysterious, um, floating, I think, like, dodecahedron. I think dodecahedron. Oh, like, yeah. yeah. Like Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> that's Wielding that geometry. geometry. Yeah. <laughs> Bringing up uh, the 3D so, modeling yeah, lingo. Yeah, yeah. So this we is also a really early, one of the first maps also. Yeah, um, and uh, Anomaly started off as a 3v3 map, yeah. exclusively. It, yeah. It's smaller. Yeah. Um, we thought, you know, it's, it's just going to sort of live in that 3v3 skirmish salvage uh, hopper. And I love this piece because it brings in all the different elements of this Golden Age tech. Sort of um, the high level motifs yeah. to, to, to guide us through the palette. level creation. And it hadn't really been developed that much yet. So this is some early concepts to try to show us yep. what that might look like. Yeah. And so that was um, like this stuff is super helpful for us because it actually uses the specific um, pieces that, uh, you know, we have built. Right. And yeah. so bringing that in is uh, yeah, it, it's, it's cool. So talk to me about these design notes. You, you, yeah. you do a play test, people take screen grabs. Yep. Who's feeding you these, these notes? Yeah, big shout out to uh, uh, Leif Johansson here. He, um, when he came in, he uh, did a pass on our maps and, and gave us these really awesome notes of, hey, like these specific instances, these views, these um, paths, you know, could be better. And so this is exactly that. Like you see a path kind of sneaking up through these rocks and leading off to the left. But it also looks like there's a path to the right, but that actually takes you off the edge of the map and there's a death drop there. So yeah. in this and case, like, you know, it, it probably made more sense before we added art to it, but then right. as you're adding art and trying to make things look cool and feel cool, yep. sometimes you go off the rails in certain directions. Yeah. Yep. And, and so you have to rein that back feedback. in. Yeah, yeah. Yep. And um, then uh yeah, like <laughs> letting <laughs> players get into these like, little like corners, spot. right? Yeah, like, Leif was pretty <laughs> instrumental in uh, giving us really good notes about little yeah. crevices to crawl into yeah. like this. Yeah. Well, and it's something we didn't really yeah. consider very much before he showed up. There was sort of a, a code of conduct between all of us level mm -hmm. designers. We're like, we won't sneak into the really crappy little crevices and screw each other up because we were really focused on the high level design. Mm -hmm. Leif but shows up and says, no campers. The longer you do yeah. that, the, uh, the more yeah. you end up with little areas like this that mm -hmm. can really bite you in the back. He'd also worked on back when you game. get it out so the door. He, ha he had some better ideas about like the, the necessary amount of cover and things like that that were a little different from previous like, projects like Halo. Little slivers that you could snipe through. Yeah, that are... yeah. a really awesome uh, eye for detail. And yeah, like uh, here, you know, cover, apparently. Yeah, I think we actually, you know, we went in and added cover to this spot. There's like cover plates here now. Um, yeah, and we get feedback from like, uh, you know, all the, all the, you know, the game designer or the game mode designers and also and the test team. designers and the test team. PvP you know? testers. Yeah, and there's people yeah. at Bungie and who engineers. aren't designers, aren't testers. They just kick ass in That's video right. games. Oh, yeah. So we invite them up into the yeah. playtest labs. Yeah. You know? yeah. Yeah, like yeah, we, so. have, thank, yeah. Thank them too. we have everybody's skill internally known, right? Like Everybody at Bungie is an amazing gamer. I mean, I think I am, <laughs> if nothing else, evidence of that, you know, yeah. that, I mean, I am the apex predator of the Destiny community. You are the and most I, amazing I like gamers. to lead the community from a place of strength. It's important to and me. And you're getting lead better every day. I get better every day because, you know, you, you've removed these forehead high walls from my path where, yeah, you know, it's like, right? I think I'm safe. Yeah, so yeah. this is like that, that weird, like, just a little bit, you know, it's just too low, right? And so uh, you need to, you know, find those little areas like you don't want to be standing behind a piece of cover and then get sniped in the head and like, oh, like what? What happened? Yeah, we Why really you shoot me in the head because I could yeah. see your head. That's what happens when you start adding art to the level, when you start bringing in details. Like now you have all of these little like things that pe players can get on. And uh, somebody the other day told me something really interesting. They're like, uh, making a level for Destiny is like, 
it's like building a skate park in some ways, right? Yeah. Like it needs to be fluid and smooth and you don't want to have all these little things that are like, you know, hitching your movement. So uh, we had uh, the concept artists on our show uh, a mm -hmm. couple weeks ago and they were talking about grabbing uh, a view of the game, you know, and it's like Leif will grab a screenshot of the game and yep. he'll draw boxes around stuff and he'll start giving you notes like don't let this guy camp here. Yep. The concept artists would do that but they would do paint overs, saying yep. maybe we can add to the environment. So yeah. if we decide we want a new route through this map, mm -hmm. they'll go through Bam. and they'll do a paint over. Yeah. Maybe we give them a rock bridge. Looks way cooler. Maybe we give them an iron bridge. Yeah. Yeah, and like and, and that's you know, that's a perfect example of like how are we gonna create a landmark or just like a subtle thing that, you know, the player will see and, and remember and, and know like, oh, when they see that bridge, they're in that place in the map. Or they see that rock arch and they know that's a very specific place. Like, especially when we have symmetrical maps, right? You need to have cues that stand out to the players so they can they can sort of build this mental map of like, oh, I'm here. I think we, didn't we even patch some of the geometry oh, on this map? Oh, we do it all the time still. Like, yeah, if, if there's a place that where we weird. missed, like, uh, blocking off an area where somebody can get too high and stand on a perch that we don't mean them to stand on, if a fan shows a video of that or uh, externally somebody finds that, then we go in and we can actually patch the uh, fix in for that. Yeah, let that be easily. a lesson to you at home. If yeah. you have a favorite hiding spot, don't <laughs> yeah, take a don't YouTube, YouTube video. These or guys listen to really that noise you. If you want to really noise you, send it to us and we can yeah. probably fix it. When we were first building levels, the team was a lot smaller. And so we just didn't have the people to throw on the maps. But, yeah, somebody would um, own a map all the way through until finishing. And now we're trying to have collaboration where we actually have like artists and designers working together and actually get more of like a strike team together, even cool. attack yeah, a map yeah. from the beginning. Yeah. yeah, but this map was super fun to work on. Um, well, the more we understand what Destiny is, the more we learn from the community, you know, the how they play and how we can anticipate the way they're going to use these spaces. I mean, that just enhances our creative process over time. When you guys were making some of these first Crucible maps, we didn't really have any clue what the actual flavor of Destiny was going to be. We had ideas, right. you know, yeah. we had hopes and dreams, but until the community gets it and until they start, you know, leading their own conversation, it's all pretty much academic, Oh yeah, we were right? building the engine, we were trying to figure out the art style, we were trying to figure out the art direction, the design direction. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of things that we were trying to figure out even to the end. Are we that, all, was, that was so exciting though, because like... Are we all worshipping the anomaly now? Is yeah. This, is this what... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All hail. All oh, hail the anomaly. Big round Whatever it is. floating in the air. I heard the travelers inside of it. No, God, don't, don't, don't do that. Don't do that. Um, you no, didn't hear that, and neither did you. Uh, <laughs> it's an old man. I'm going to change the subject right now. I never thought sure. in a million years that I would be doing this every single no, day. No, me neither. I never thought I'd be sitting on a couch with guys like you. Or, you know, or even working with guys like Leif Johansson. I mean, you know, I've played a lot of games that he's worked on, you know, yep. along right. with uh, Destiny Superhand, Superfan, Lars, Superfan, Superfan Cotton, David Bondahar. Mm -hmm. Mr. Lars. Carney. Mr. Lars. Yeah, yeah, Mr. Lars. Mr. Mr. Leif. Leif so, J. Uh, let's take us to orbit. Cool. Notably about Anomaly as well is, well, well you're right, this is about choke points, shotguns, short range fights. There's a few long lanes and the massive central open chamber, yeah. which is one of the few areas I feel like in, in our shipping Destiny maps that, that really succeeded at having three layers in a single space mm -hmm. that's digestible and, and effective for combat. Yeah. A big part mm -hmm. of that was sort of the spinning anomaly uh, centrifuge around the center of the map, which yeah. dynamically changes the way the space plays from every different angle. Yeah, like mm -hmm. lining up that perfect like disengage where you, you know, maybe you're on B, right? You're capping B and you know, it starts getting crazy and you jump down, you time that perfectly to get under the centrifuge and then escape on the other side and then pop back up and then start engaging B from across the room. Yeah. It can make uh, you feel like a real badass running yeah. on that map sometimes. Yeah. Another interesting note about Anomaly is that it's one of the few maps that's actually called Anomaly and it's uh, internally. Internally, it was name. yeah, that was, that was the code anomaly. Name. The code <laughs> name was Anomaly, and we shipped with Anomaly. We've got progressively dumber and dumber internal names for our <laughs> yeah. two. Start running out of nicknames. For a so while, check out yeah. uh, this concept art. We're going to uh, this is Frank Capizzuto. Yeah, okay. Mm. Frank Capizzuto created a uh, an early vision of uh, Twilight Gap. So uh, Adam, you're going to uh, lead us through this conceptual look back at. Uh, another Earth map. Yeah, so Mick here uh, did the original level design and layout for this map. It went through several different architectural iterations during the yeah, lifetime of this, its development. This is actually more like it was going to be part yeah. of the city. Right. But eventually we decided to go with the Cosmopolitan. Sort of uh, like this, this concept image here is actually a really awesome realization of what the Twilight Gap could have been. Um, the inspiration was like a World War II bunker mixed with some sci-fi. Yeah, so. yeah. Lower end of the screen, like you see the old old style architecture, World War II-esque era bunker things. 
And then on the upper right hand corner, you can see sort of city or tower style architecture outfitted on top of it to sort of maintain its modernity. In the shipping version of it, if you want to go to our next slide here, it ended up much more like this, yeah. much more of this flavor. Uh, however, you'll see sort of uh, the, the city's guns that are still placed on this outfit, even though the facility itself is extremely old. Mm -hmm. uh, the city still sends guardians out here, outfits with modern weaponry to fend off the fallen. Yeah, That's the sort of a fictional like, tie. Uh, the shield the traveler creates is weak here, so gotcha. the guns okay. are firing on enemies. So you took that rusty texture yes. and uh, you uh, applied it to a space that's uh, a little bit more appointed laid out like this. Giving it the really old world feel, but still sort of modern, yeah. uh, and sort of fantastic a style of, of, a, of a defense facility. And when you say this is a 3D concept, this wasn't, does that mean that this was a playable space or was this just somebody giving uh, the concept, you know, uh, the concept con artist took the like the mass out and tried to make it look cool basically okay. yeah. and instead yeah. of painting it he did in 3d and we were able to take that geometry and use it as like a baseline for making for finishing the map oh let's actually take a look at one more slide this actually this is the mood i mean this is of all the concepts that right. we've looked at this is where you know the textures that you wanted to use the art that you wanted to use you know the space you can see the guns there yeah. i mean this really feels like Twilight Gap more than anything that we've seen. Yeah, this is a this, point, this is sort of a graphic design uh, pass. So one of the yeah. things that a lot of our, uh, or rather a specialized few of our concept artists do, is they have uh, re they're really solid graphic designers as well. This isn't exactly what we ended up going with, but it sort of influenced yeah. the flavor of the, the graphic design through the space. Really well, cool. let's take a look at exactly what you ended up going with. Uh, we we'll want. join each other in the space. So here we are on uh, Twilight Gap. Let's uh, let's meet up at uh, B. I love the initial choice that you get. Like, do you go straight to B, or yeah. do you go cap your, your exactly? Sort of it's base? it's a bit of a personal tug of war sure. uh, between where you want to run first. Like, this is what the player sees when they first enter the map, and you have two very clear choices. But you actually have more than that. You've got if you pan right or left, you've got even more. But the first obvious choice is for players here to run to the C flag, cap their home flag. Yeah. The enemy team is going to be doing the opposite in the the cannon room. With the A flag. Sure. As I'm always as saying, do we just need one guy to do that? Just make sure you don't get flanked from below. That's right. right. One guy. Sneaky flank. Or an AD. Immediately turns to fighting over the 50 yard line, mm -hmm. controlling B flag, and controlling this awesome choke point here in the center of the yeah. map where all these crossroads are. I've dropped some bubbles in here that have been epic. Th this is an <laughs> excellent Ward of Dawn map. Yeah, it's, the, it's basically the art of a good fight, the art of war, Sun right. Tzu might say. But, so, uh, you know. Finding the right compromise. Yep. I mean, because all of this, all you know, it's the entire level is composed. Every scene, every view that you have is very intentional in the sense that, like, we're leading you on a path. We're trying to communicate your choices to you, um, and that's the artistic part. And then, and then there's also the artistic part of like just making it look cool, um, and like adding on all of the like the cool little pipes and the details and the rust streaks and the you know the destruction. Mm -hmm. um, so remember, some, yeah. some of the things you add to the game are for our imagination. Some of the things you add to the game are for, you know, the tactics, for the cover, mm -hmm. for, you know, the way the game's actually going to play. Um, you were telling a story to me one time about how, you know, you wanted to create uh, an environment here where it would almost be, you know, challenging for players to follow each other. You know, right. like there's a guy who I've been playing with, you know, for almost a decade now, and in every game we've ever played together, um, you know, the guy who introduced me to bungee games, I would try to follow him, and he's just so nimble, the way he jumps and the way he takes corners and the way he chooses his sure. path across the map. I'm like, I can't even keep up with that well, guy. Well, Twilight Gap is an excellent map for that kind of gameplay, and if you, this route that I'm running right now is an excellent example of uh, really utilizing sort of the parkour, uh, really badass jumping feel that Destiny brings to the table. Yeah. Uh, this lane, the, the outer lane See, with the death drops you. on one side is... Now I found you. Okay. It's definitely a compelling way to get into an engagement. Uh, and if your gun skill is, you know, outmatched by your opponent, you have lots of bailout options to try and juke him and all sorts of different ways to either just keep running laterally along this external lane or dip back into some tunnels and come back an elevator through the middle. Uh, if you tried to chase me through this level, I bet you I could lose you pretty quickly, and vice versa. It's, it's not easy to keep track of your target. The thinking during the match isn't just, there's a guy, shoot, you know, aim at him and shoot at him. It's not just a matter of, you know, I shot first or I saw you first. It's yeah. really a matter of choosing a tactical path that makes yeah. sense. You know, it's like, you never thought I was going to jump up from there, did you? It's like, no, yeah. I was just looking at one doorway. Um, talk to me about uh, 
how you choose the places where you'll put spawns or choose the places where you'll put, say, a control point. Because you were uh, saying right. before, like, you know, I'm standing right where I would capture, um, I would capture my, you know, control point for a uh, Bravo team. So when, when, when we start a new map, one of the things that we focus on is where the three control points would be, like you suggested. And it's, if we're going to have a more radial map, sort of like Shores of Time or uh, uh, Rusted Lands, something that has more uh, sort of rotational flow, yeah. we tend to go for more equidistant flag placements where 60 meters, 50 meters or so between each flag mm -hmm. uh, seems to be sort of the, the Goldilocks zone. Uh, but the important part is that they're Just equally right. distanced from one another. Yeah. Uh, this map is a has a completely different flow than something like that, where it's a really sort of long, horizontally uh, flowing map, where we have things sort of placed along uh, the ends of the map and one in the middle, similar to Pantheon, uh, but but less rigid. This has sort of a little bit of a rotational flow to it. Yeah, it's just more porous, which gives you a lot more options. Significantly more porous and supremely asymmetrical. Yeah, beautifully <laughs> asymmetrical. Like, uh, so, yeah. so this map has your A and C flags on the outside of the map, B flag on the 50-yard line, and they actually have, uh, it, I believe, fairly good parity between each other from A to B, C to B, for example. Mm -hmm. uh, when I spawn on one side of the map, I don't necessarily feel as though I'm at a disadvantage uh, compared to one side or the other. And I don't think that same argument can be yeah, made for, for maps like the Blind Watch, where the A flag has actually a bit more distance between the middle than the C does. Yeah. In terms of flag placements, Twilight Gap has sort of a notable story about the C flag. So we're on this platform here. Yep. I think it's you and I together. It is you uh, and I. This is C flag's current location. Over the course of development, I think that it ended up down here at one point. Uh, at another time, actually fairly late in the game, it was. You can make that jump. It was back here, down yeah, in this, this old be, this uh, service elevator. Yeah, this would be. And we didn't ship that because <laughs> you can just sort of camp these corners and watch yeah. every every person that comes in and out of this room. Yep. You really have a, a really strong power position in terms of defending Sea Flag. But that wasn't necessarily the reason why we decided not to go with that. It was because when you did capture this flag, uh, it was much further from B than A was. Uh, so the oh, A so team okay. would capture A and B, and it was very difficult to take over B flag because you ended up sort of getting, yep. uh, with our spawning systems, pushed back into this room over and over. And then you have teams saying, no, 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 you want to own these two. You never want to capture that one. Yeah. yeah. Right. yeah. And originally and in Massa, this, at each other. this gondola structure out here was actually just an island, just like a cliffside with a rock on it that was like a shortcut in the map. Yep. If you remember mm -hmm. the, the drawing by uh, Frank. Yeah, it was actually uh, like the layout was pretty different. It felt more like a uh, attack and defend map as well. Yeah, yeah. We can keep talking about uh, the way you brought this to life, mm -hmm. or uh, we could uh, spend a couple minutes shooting each other in the face. Oh gosh. Yeah, I didn't. How about even, both? How about both? Uh, mm -hmm. Can we unleash? Unleash. Unleash the fury, Mitch. Unleash the fury. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there was another like this entire hangar area that. that uh, I'm in. Oh yeah. Where we at? This was actually a late breaking addition for like that's right. performance concerns. <laughs> right. Like, yeah, part of the map was that we manage. because the engine was in development, we ended up having to adjust the environment to actually be performant to help with um, viz blocking and things like that that helped the uh, the Xbox and PlayStation perform really? better. I think a lot of the things we look to is um, compartmentalization. Can we make the space feel uh, like a like a, a a compartment that your brain can understand and you can understand the entrances and exits. And then we also try to simplify. Um, yeah. In a game where players have any kind of weapon, uh, you, it's hard to know. They have supers, there's a lot of one-shot stuff, grenades are very powerful. Uh, essentially just so much can happen. Yeah. Um, the gameplay space is... Don't kill me. Is, Don't kill me. Cease I think, fire. You know, it's it's nicer to have uh, the gameplay space be a little bit um, easier to understand. Cease fire. A bit simpler. I was shooting. Oh, here we have heavy ammunition, <clears throat> and uh, it's been an interesting week of conversation at Bungie and also in the community. It's my understanding that uh, we have deployed a hot fix. Uh, Cosmo's been upstairs uh, manning mission control. Clown cartridge bug on rocket launchers is fixed. You are safe, we hope, from the storm of rockets. And uh, also, uh, Iron Banner is live. The game is control, so mm -hmm. uh, go and get yourself some. And uh, thanks for tuning in, guys. Yeah. Adam Williams, yeah. Mick Buckmiller, Cooley Callahan, and uh, the people that work with them, uh, they make the places where you go and fight each other. And we thank you for doing that, because you know, without the games that you play, it would all just be uh, 
It'll just be a hobby for us, yes, right? Sir. Just that's right. Weird, dude. So. It's a lot more coming too. Quick that like, oh god, we do listen to the feedback. <laughs> like there have been surveys as to like yeah, what maps absolutely. people like the most, and you know the the it varies as to like which maps are at the top of the level. We we try to feed, listen to the fans and try to make an experience that they want. So we want to hear the feedback. We yeah. want to iterate on issues. You know, if there are major issues with balancing and things like that, those are things we try to address. Here is a glimpse of some of the awesome stuff that you have created. Uh, here is a glimpse of some of the different movies of the week that we have ripped from the pages of uh, the creations portal on Bungie.net. So thanks for watching, okay. and check this out. <laughs>